Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making some incredibly delicious smoked almond cheddar wafers. So let's get started. First off, grab eight ounces or 227 grams of a nice sharp cheddar, and we're gonna grate it up. We're making basically the best crackers you've ever had in your life. They're cheesy with an amazing hit of savory smoked almond deliciousness. They're great for parties and really cool gifts too. I like making big bags of these and handing these out. I'm just gonna warn you though, it'll be gone in a flash. And by the way, this just so happens to be a recipe from the winter chapter of my book. So if you have a copy, grab it, open up to page 115 and bake along. Our prep work is all done. Now grab your food processor. The rest of the work is gonna happen in that. Into the bowl of my food processor, I'm adding three quarters of a cup or 90 grams of these delicious smoked almonds. Lots of flavor and a good hit of salt and crunch. <laughs> They're loud little suckers. Lots of flavor and a good hit of salt and crunch for our crackers. We're gonna pulse this until they're finely chopped, but don't go crazy because that's how you make smoked almond butter. <laughs> All right. Just to show you the texture, I like a nice fine almond meal. So I have a little bit of crunch left over, but no big pieces. So I'm me, I'm using the scale. You can just measure everything right into the bowl though. Now we want one and a quarter cups or 150 grams of all purpose flour. These crackers are super easy to make, but the other nice thing is you can make them so far in advance and just freeze them. Freeze the log, put it into the fridge when you know you're gonna have a party or people over and then slice and bake. There's like no effort and they are fresh and delicious. Right now I'm adding two teaspoons of cornstarch and while cornstarch is horrible to touch or even think about touching, it's great for baking. It's gonna give you a really nice tender crumb and just help these to be the perfect cracker. But two teaspoons is all you need. Oh, just gonna add an extra quarter teaspoon of cornstarch since I think that's what ended up on my apron. <laughs> Speaking of quarter teaspoons, one quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. This will give us a really nice little hit of heat. You can add other spices that you really love or other types of chili, or even just up this measurement if you want it to be nice and hot. And our cheddar is a little bit salty. The almonds are definitely salty, but one quarter teaspoon of salt will just give you the perfect balance. Now we're gonna add our eight ounces of shredded cheese in. This gets pulsed up before a final delicious ingredient. Before I pulse this up, I'm gonna cube half a cup or 113 grams of unsalted cold butter. This goes in next, but I just wanna be ready. All right, pop that top on, and we're gonna process this until it's nice and combined. Okay. It looks delicious, it looks beautiful. Now we can add our half cup of butter in. Just sprinkle that over the top. Mmm. So easy, you have to make this. We're gonna pulse this up until the butter's incorporated and we have what looks like kind of large breadcrumbs. Keep an eye on it. That's good. Yeah, take a look at this. I could eat this by the spoonful right now, but I won't. I'm gonna make good choices. You can see they're big, like kind of crumbly breadcrumbs. That's what you see inside of here. And it's nice and mixed. If you're wondering what's gonna hold this mixture together, one, we're gonna press it together, but two, we're gonna pour two tablespoons of milk in while this is running, and you're gonna notice this turn into a ball of dough, basically. So fast. One, two. Oh, it's, like, it's like an earthquake in there. Okay. Ah, that was a magical two tablespoons of milk. Whenever you're making like a pastry crust or something and you're adding the ice water in slowly, you're like, ah, oh, it's still so dry, what's happening? 
You have to just trust it's gonna hydrate and come together. This has come together. Our food processor is done. Thank you for your service. We're gonna put it away and do the rest by hand. Our cracker dough is single and therefore vulnerable. It has been dumped from the island. <laughs> okay, dump the dough out right onto your floured surface. If I could manage an Australian accent, I would have in that moment. But it's important to know your limits. This dough looks fine to me. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a knead to make sure because you never know if there's like a little clump of like unmixed butter hanging out. It's just better safe than sorry. So just work it together. You can see it looks nice and homogenous throughout. There's no parts that are dry. No parts that are too wet either. And one thing, the one thing that I noticed can go wrong in this recipe is when you roll this up, sometimes depending on how you kneaded it together and how you shaped it, you'll end up with like a little hole that goes through the middle. You don't want that. So just really like kind of pack it together nicely. Add a tiny bit more flour and we're gonna roll this into like a two inch thick log. If you wanna have slightly smaller crackers, that'll work too. There we go. Look at that beautiful roll. Okay. Grab a little rimmed sheet pan. You have options here in this recipe. The book calls for us to roll these in poppy seeds. I love the way poppy seeds taste and look. It gives the wafers a beautiful bit of definition and I think this really makes the recipe shine. But you don't have to. Some people don't like poppy seeds or don't want the chance of them getting stuck in your teeth. So I'll give you an alternate as well. Just about a quarter cup. Give it a shake. Oh, so satisfying. Now you're gonna take one of your logs and just roll it gracefully with confidence in those poppy seeds. Press gently and roll. Look at that. That's all you needed. Just to see, let's use some white sesame seeds. Oh my gosh. I didn't think they were gonna explode like that. Anyways, roll in the sesame seeds. Cut that paper core. You can wrap your dough either in plastic or parchment paper like I am. I'm only chilling this for two hours. I'm not concerned about freezer burn. If you wanted to make this way in advance, like a week or so, wrap it in plastic, wrap it in foil. Be extra careful. Now, pop that into your paper towel core, and now this is gonna chill for at least two hours in the freezer. You could also have this overnight or much longer. It'll keep for a long time. When we come back, we're gonna slice them up and bake. I was about to try and squeeze both of these into this paper towel core when I remembered I have a baguette pan. If you happen to have a baguette pan, one, mmm, delicious baguettes at home, but two, also perfect for storing cookie rolls in the freezer. So this will freeze with a nice round bottom. Ah, amazing. It's like an extra reason to get a baguette pan. In you go. <laughs> Towards the end of your chill time, you're gonna set that oven to 350 so it's nice and cozy. And I have to say, these guys did not actually chill for a full two hours. They feel pretty firm, so we're just gonna go with it. All right, so you have a little bit of a nub here. We're just gonna cut that off. I will be baking it and I will be eating it, but this is my chef's treat. Here we go. The rest of our slices are gonna be about an eighth of an inch thick. Use a nice sharp knife and just get to work. Just try and be consistent with your slices because if one is super thin and the others are fairly thick, that thin one will burn while the other ones are perfectly cooked. And you can see how perfectly round this is because of the way we stored it. I'm also slicing just a few wafers from my sesame rolled log. I want to do a taste test, but this can go back into the freezer and just hang out until the next time I have people over or want a delicious snack. Somewhat optional, but I'm piercing the center of each wafer with a fork. We'll get some air right into the center and give you a slightly more even bake, but honestly, I've done it without and it's fine. <laughs> These go into the oven for 14 to 17 minutes at 350 or until the bottom is golden brown. Then I'll tell you what to do next. You're not done then. I gave my cheddar wafers 16 minutes in the oven and they look golden and perfect. Don't leave them here. You never wanna leave crispy things on the baking sheet. Transfer to a wire rack. This, by the way, is the same trick I use for homemade waffles. 
you don't want any moisture to create steam and make things soggy, so transfer to a wire rack as soon as they're done cooking. I've gotta say, I love the way the poppy seeds look, but I really like the sesame seeds too because it's a nice contrast. White on orange, black on orange, it's whatever you prefer. It's time for a bite, but first, listen to this. Okay. It's like pure cheddar flavor with all those smoky almonds, little hit of heat. They're basically addictive and you're not gonna be able to stop eating these, so make double batches. I hope you get a chance to try this recipe from my book. And if you like this video, check out my book playlist.